Good morning. I am here with Saskatchewan-born, Calgary-based artist, Sheila Kernan. Good morning, Sheila. Thank you for being here. Good morning. <laughs> awesome. So we are going to kick start this morning with a fun round of this or that. So Sheila, oceans or mountains? Uh, both. Both? <laughs> Hard decision. <laughs> Sweet or savory? Sweet. Sweet. Good choice. Mine too. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Summer <laughs> or winter? Summer. Fiction or non-fiction? Non-fiction. I like the story. Yeah. Uh, the window seat or the aisle seat on an airplane? Depends if I'm with the kid or not. Okay. But uh, window? Yeah. You like the view? Yeah. That's awesome. Who inspired you growing up to become an artist? My main inspiration would be my nana. Um, she's such a creative soul. She wanted to be an artist herself. And she would always uh, pick me and my sister and my cousins to do um, sewing weekends in her house. Super fun. And um, secondly, Mr. Sikorsky, my art, uh, high school art uh, teacher, he, when I was in grade nine, I was only signed up for the following year for one art class. This just will not do. So he took me down to the principal's office and he had me redo my schedule so I took all the art classes that my high school offered. So it's pretty special. That's awesome. Um, what is a great piece of advice you've been given by another artist? By another artist? Um, I'm actually going to change it and go by a, somebody that I respected in the art industry awesome. uh, that I knew. She was a gallery owner and she told me. Don't be a flash in the pan. Whatever you choose to do, make sure that your practice has um, a lot of depth to it so that you don't get bored as an artist and also um, you can keep things really exciting for your collectors or um, your audience. That's great. And I feel like you have done just that. So, <laughs> so Sheila, what does art mean to you? Art, um, to me, means um, curiosity and exploration. So the ability to kind of answer the questions of why, why the world looks the way it is, um, what inspires you about the world, um, what makes you curious about your surroundings, or maybe something inner that you just need to get out um, in some kind of a creative fashion. And it, it kind of is forever fluid and changing for me. So yeah, art curiosity and exploration. Awesome. Um, so who are two of your favorite artists, uh, historical and contemporary? Okay, this one's hard because it's forever changing. <laughs> um, the historical artists, I go to artists whose work are not necessarily reflective of my own, but things that really inspired me. So the abstract expression has really inspired me. Um, Hans Hoffman, for his um, color theories, um, push and pull theories, and Mark Rothko. I mean, he got some uh, soft, glowing, sort of vibrating work. And uh, his work is work that you really have to see in person. I remember the first time I saw it in person, I was always reading um, in textbooks and stuff that his work was very spiritual. And, and, um, I was like, well, I think it's cool, but I just don't get that. And then I went in person and I was like, they vibrate. Like it's something more special than seeing the scale of the work. They're so massive, like full, like 30 feet high. Um, and it, it, it's just impressive. There's nothing um, quite like it, making that connection in person. Totally, totally. And then for contemporary artists, it's always shifting and I'm always like obsessed over specific things or like I love different things with other artists. Um, some contemporaries, um, Sarah Winkle, she does this abstract sort of collage landscapes. Um, Andrew Salgado, he's actually from Regina. Yes, he is. Your work and I love that he's always willing to kind of take that risk and, and not just do what he's done before. Um, Catherine McNaughton, she has beautiful abstract work. Erin um, Lore, she thick texture and bright colors. Um, Kip Dorland, again, thick textures, bright colors, but his work is a little bit more sublime. And then um, Rachel Butler, she 
um, paints like portraiture or like women that are like floating in water and her light is just really cool. So again, very different than what I do, but I, I like respect and appreciate and love what I'm in different ways. So Sheila, what are your top two career goals as an artist? Um, well, I've been working as an artist for over 15 years now. So when I first started, I my goal was just simply be an artist as a career. Um, so it, they're, they're constantly shifting and changing. Um, I have a lot of like personal aesthetic goals of like where I want to take my practice to. Um, so it's hard to share those necessarily because it's kind of I'm still working through yeah. what that's going to look like. Um, but my goal is to always be innovative and creative and push the boundaries. Um, and have as many people like grow my audience so that I can share it with as many people as possible. That's awesome. Good to hear. I know that my small collection at home is growing and I hope that it continues to grow as well. Um, <laughs> it is. Uh, so, Sheila, describe yourself as a hashtag. Kind of old school, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I like that. That's awesome. So Sheila, what is one aspect within your career that you had to learn the hard way from? That it's important to keep records and stay up to date on stuff related to taxes. <laughs> Just make sure that you're organized um, because it's important. I think that um, I worked at a, a bank before I became an artist, so I think that I learned some skills that way. Um, but it's so easy um, to let the paperwork and the... Um, sort of housekeeping things within the career get in the way of creativity so you want to like set that time aside for it so it doesn't get in the way of creation. That's awesome. Uh, what is the biggest surprise you've received as an artist? The biggest surprise that I've received as an artist would be that you can be an artist as a career. Um, growing up and it, I think it's changing as you know, new generations are coming about but for instance, my grandma, she wanted to be an artist, um, but it wasn't practical at the time, so she, was, she went into um, pharmacology instead. Okay. And then my parents were like, well, kind of that fear for the children of wanting them to be independent, and they wanted me to become a dental hygienist. Nothing wrong with being a dental hygienist, it just was not in my heart, and it wasn't the path that I um, needed to go on. So I was always nervous about it and kind of like taking that leap and going like, I'm going to do this, but at the same time going like, I hope it's possible. And it's really cool that it, it, you know anything is possible as long as you put the hard work and um, yeah, the dreams do come true, can come true. Well, and I mean, so, you know, having that initial thought, you know, that this is something that you want to do. And then there must have been this great, almost like deep sigh of like, accomplishment when you finally were like I'm doing this I am I am working as a full-time artist and this is my career well, I always told myself the worst thing that possibly could happen is I have to go find a job right. so I was like it's not that bad it's not that bad yeah. <laughs> so so that made it easier as well as um, I had backup plans of thinking like okay well maybe I'll do my archery first and then um, if it doesn't sort of take off to being a painter right away, I really loved architecture. So I thought, well, maybe I can go be an architect and just find a creative field that I could use um, my foundation degree as. Um, and I was lucky that it, I didn't have to go through those paths, but I was more than excited to try that if that was the direction. Well, what advice would you give 20 year old Sheila? <sighs> That's difficult because what advice would I give myself? I feel like all the struggles that I've been through were necessary. So it's like if I changed it and I gave myself the advice, would I then change it? I don't the, know. the course that you're on, yeah. Right. Um, but I would say be bold, be brave, and don't worry so much. Just, yeah. just go for it. Isn't that just a life like mantra for anyone? You know? Less hesitation, just do it. We're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, if you could switch lives with someone for one day, who would it be? Okay, this is going to date me. <laughs> but um, I would choose Blake Lively or Jessica Biel because Brian Reynolds and Justin Timberlake. 
Those are, those are great. I agree. I agree with Blake Lively too. She's one of my favorite. Yeah, and they just seem to have so much fun. And I go, that's pretty awesome. It's like career goals related to the show. Okay, so Sheila, your favorite place to view art? My favorite place to view art is really anywhere, um, but it's rather who I would want to view art in. And that answer is children. Why? They just have such a spectacular mind and just how they interpret things and how they experience things that it's just, there's nothing more exciting. Recently, I uh, went to the Vincent Van Gogh exhibition, um, an interactive sort of display that shows the time of uh, his work through the light on the floor, the ceiling, the walls, and it kind of dances. And just watching my son um, experience it, he even had me read at the beginning. They have like 20 different sort of panels with all this writing about the artist, sort of boring stuff that most kids would pass by, but he made me read every single one of them. And I think that it just is a very special to, you know, they just have so much desire to learn and experience it. So with a child, um, what is your dream country to visit for painting inspiration? Okay, well, it's one place that I haven't been that I would love to is I want to go to um, Iceland and the waterfalls. Yes, Just that would be amazing. Um, so that's on my bucket list for sure. Maybe one day I'll get to turn there. Nice. Um, and then I would love to revisit and go back to Japan. I spent... Um, I was on a rotary exchange when I was in high school, and I spent a summer there, and it was really cool to um, explore the city. They have like two levels of si on sidewalks in some of their cities, so it's just the perspective and just the, the grand, sort of how big it is. It's awesome. Let's see it again. So you paint in a various subject matter, and if you were to start painting later today, what would be your subject and why? So I'm finding myself really, really drawn. So if two things, if I wanted to be more play, I'm really, really drawn right now to abstraction, like pure abstraction. And um, I think that's telling me something. I find I float between um, realism and abstraction within my work. I started out with realistic portraiture when I was younger. So very photorealistic, um, looks like a photograph sort of paintings. And then I kind of went more abstract and landed kind of hovering where my aesthetic is, and I'm um, really drawn to just the shapes and color and texture right now, so maybe I would play with that a bit. So right. Sheila, do you listen to music while you paint, and if so, um, who is a favorite musician? I guess I do listen to music while I paint, um, and it'll vary just depending upon my country, the country, the pop, um, so I don't necessarily have a favorite. Um, I have been listening to podcasts. Oh, um, as audiobooks, I think I've listened to I think like 300, 400 audiobooks wow. um, in the last couple of years in my studio, um, as well as um, yeah, podcasts. Right now, my favorite podcast is actually um, I think like Jack Shepard's from Transfer. Okay, nice. Funny. And recently, what's the, what's been one of your favorite books that you've read that you would recommend? Because I often find I'm listening to them, but I'm really bad with names. I can, I can probably tell you the whole story. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you find that you have a daily ritual? And if so, what does it look like? Being an artist, your day kind of varies quite a bit in terms of every day is unique. But, like today, I'm talking to you. Um, but generally speaking, I um, wake up and I start my day off with like answering emails and kind of doing housekeeping stuff just to wake myself up I'm not the biggest morning person so it takes me a little time and then um, I paint and usually I'm painting in the studio about eight hours or so during the day um, sometimes I'll break up in the middle of the day with like an exercise a class or something nice and then the end of the night after uh, you know done my housework in the house then I generally like to go back into the studio and sometimes not every night but um, a lot of the times I would spend another couple of hours kind of 
is it hard to pull yourself away once you've really immersed yourself in a certain painting that you're working on? Yeah, if you get into the zone, I can forget to eat, I can forget to, you know, I, I have all these alarms on my phone that are constantly going off yeah. sometimes, so I'm like, oh right, okay, I need to do this, so, um, which is really cool, because in that way I, I actually am focusing on what I'm doing. That's awesome. Um, what is inspiring you in life right now? Right now I'm inspired by simplicity, and just kind of, I, think, I feel like in the last couple of years we've all kind of had that trust upon us but I think it's really special just to like stop and smell the road and look at your scenery um, Alberta skies are beautiful this time of year I think Saskatchewan skies probably as well there's lots of storms and sunsets um, so just nature life movies, things that I watch I'll, I'll be watching a movie and I'll be like oh that's a really cool scene of the city and I'll stop and a photo or just like write a note in my book and have a little sketchbook of ideas that I'm sort of keeping inspiration. Well, and so you must, like, with being so close to the mountains, you must find yourself um, some days, like, do you ever just want to hop in the car and drive out to the mountains just to get that breath of fresh air, a little bit of inspiration, um, which would be so different than when you're um, doing your cityscapes and you're, you know, in that nice downtown Calgary culture? Absolutely, I think that works. I'm so lucky where I live because I'm on the prairies, I have mountains, I have the city. I guess I just don't have ocean. But, uh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the holidays are for. That's what holidays are for, yeah. <laughs> um, how did you adopt your style and medium? By trying everything. So when I was in art school, I really focused on actually not looking at other artists. And there was a time that I actually had a Google for myself of don't look at others because I didn't want to be unnecessarily confused. It's so easy to have what others are doing creep into your work. So I wanted to be me. So I tried every medium. Um, I worked in an art supply store. So I was like, a kid in a candy store. I tried every paint, every type of paintbrush, and I studied it up. Like I would research what minerals were in each paint. So I was just, I liked to know. Just that curiosity. Um, so then just by doing things then I discovered sort of what I was more drawn to and then it kind of just developed into what I do now. And then I started looking at others work once I sort of had an aesthetic direction. When you look at other artists work, um, does it ever um, start to kind of like sway your ideals of things that maybe you'd like to implement? and? Um, I've, I've, I know it's a personal thing because you don't want to necessarily, you're not copying someone, but do you just find that it can be so inspirational to see what other people are doing and how you could take your own spin on certain aspects? I find that it's good to look to others' work, um, but not get too caught up to it. I think yeah. that the more hours that you have as an artist, like I've put in 15 years now, so I can look to another artist and I can inspired by their work and I'll copy it. When I was younger and you're just developing, you should, I think you need to be very aware of not copying because yeah. that artist has spent a lot of time and energy creating their work and it's flattering but it's also, I think, important to have your own voice yeah. and just be consciously aware of what your own voice is. So I can look to another artist now and I feel that's beautiful and I like the way that they reflect the light off of things and I can go, okay, well, in my work, how can I improve how I reflect the light off of things? But not necessarily copy, right? Yeah. That's what I look for in other artists work now is just beauty and then going, oh, okay, I can improve my values. Maybe I need to have more darks and lights or something like that. But that's, that's about the extent that I look at others. What theme could you return to regularly because it really drives your creativity? I'm going to say less of a theme and more of a process. For me, it's more about the process. So the subject matter, I can, you know, revisit and go back to certain things. But it's more about, like, how I deconstruct and construct. I'm more excited about um, that. For instance, you know, how can I um, do different steps in the sky? What color and texture um, can I put into the piece? And how can I play with it? 
Um, is there a certain medium that you've always wanted to try working within? Um, so again, because when I was in art school, I tried everything I possibly can. So I'm always like, what's new? What's the new exciting kind of um, texture or medium or, or product that comes out? And I will always buy it because you have to try. Yeah. Um, I really like to explore more of like name costing, uh, uh, different metals, maybe go more into some sculpture. I, I feel like I have a thousand ideas and not enough time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are your top three favorite colors that you gravitate towards when you start to create a piece? My favorite colors would be carnauticum, violet, yes. it's about the same. Um, opera rose is sort of like a bright pink color. And I love phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is beautiful. How do you know when a painting is complete? I would say that you're better to stop when it looks more incomplete, so 95% then we go 1% over. Okay. So the last little bit of brush strokes is a lot of like looking and not as much painting. So often I will set them aside and just glance by them or walk by them, live with them for a bit um, because that's when you know like am I sure I want to do this? I feel like almost the work in your mind, how it would, you would finish it, and then be like, no, 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 and then change it around again. Or um, you could take out you know, collage pieces and hold it over your artwork just so that you know if it should mean anything else. So you just know. It's like an intuition. I'm sure after 15 years, <laughs> it is more than an intuition. It's just like your regular <laughs> routine. <laughs> So Sheila, what is your favorite time of the day to paint and why? As I mentioned, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> so um, the late afternoon, midnight, um, and, and later, I'm, I'm really good at painting late into the night. <laughs> okay, nice. A night owl. <laughs> yes. Um, what is your process when you're planning for a new show? When I'm planning for a new show, I'm always... Um, you know, it, it'll be several shows in advance. I, I mentioned that I keep a little sketchbook and write down ideas. Um, so I kind of have things I'm working through all the time. So I will think about the space that they're going to be on, and I'll think about um, what subject matter I want to paint, and how I want the pieces to be read with the audience from a going to the opening sort of standpoint, as well as um, as individual pieces themselves, they have to work, right? right? Because ultimately they will find homes most likely on individually. Um, so I think about that. Um, I do sketching and color studies. Um, all of my work is based upon photographs that I've taken and I collage them together. So there might be four or five photographs in one piece of collages. So sort of I make these little thumbnails nice. to work off of and then from there I do large scale drawings and color studies and then I go into the piece and I kind of, because I do so much preparation, they kind of eventually just kind of get put to the side, all of my inspirational sort of media get put to the side and I just let intuition So because you do so much prep work um, beforehand, do you find that as you paint typically things are quite seamless and really turn out the way that you are hoping that they will? Or do you still every now and then just run into those glitches where you have to kind of really, like not start from scratch, but kind of reevaluate what you're doing? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel that um, sometimes a work is not working. You have to learn to let it go and tear it up and start over. And of course I probably tear up more pieces in the beginning of my career than I do now, but I still do tear up work that's just not working. Because um, I only want my best out there, right? Yeah. Um, as well as, I feel like you have to go with the flow. So as much planning as I do, I also have to react to what's happening. Like, hey, you can control, but it's also a fluid thing that you kind of have to let it go and do its thing. You know, like, uh, 
watercolor, it will just kind of blend. And you can't, if you try to control too much, the work looks overworked. So you have to play with that a bit, as well as um, just know when to react to if something's not working. I find that for a little bit of frustration is incredibly important in the process of painting. It's when you're onto something and it's when you make the best work. It's when you're pushing yourself, like working out's hard. Doing things are hard. <laughs> so when it's a little bit hard, that's when you might be in your best zone. What is your favorite part of social media and how has it really helped you to integrate within your business? My favorite part of social media is, you know, as an artist, we have a very solo career. So having that connectivity with people, um, sharing what you do, having a response and growing sort of like little friendships with people, I think is really cool. Um, and, and having your work reach a wide audience is amazing. And I think it's integral to how we view work. The world is so busy that I think it's really awesome and I can share my work and somebody can glance down and be like, oh, this can take one second on the day to look at this painting and just enjoy it. So I think that that's pretty cool. So I guess our last question, we're here already. Uh, what has been the most memorable moment of 2021 for you? So my most memorable moment of 2021, um, so sad, sorry. Um, my Nana, the summer passed. Um, but before she passed, I was able to spend three amazing days with her. And we painted um, both in person and with an iPad and just sharing that creativity with me was incredibly special. Oh, that's so nice. And I'm sorry to hear about that, but you um, clearly have a lifetime of memories with her so that is very special well thank you so much Sheila it was so great to be able to chat with you today and uh, <laughs> I know that I can speak for everyone that we're looking very forward to continuing to see what comes from Sheila Kernan in 2022